So before I called this uh, rants from the road or something like that, but I think it's more appropriate to say ramblings because I talk a lot and a lot of times I don't really know where it's going. Kind of like Michael Scott on The Office. So um, today I had a conversation with a homeowner and he has a raised parking area and that's not uncommon, especially in the city. If you're up against the alley and your property slopes downhill, um, that you have something that's a little more level with the alley. And so we've actually installed uh, one of those before the walls to support the parking area. But this is unique because he has the parking area, it's all concreted. There is a nice white vinyl fence um, bordering this. And I don't know, it. the fence very well could be supporting some of this parking area and kind of acting to hold in some of the stone that's under um, in the dirt that's under the concrete. So as I'm talking to him, he had mentioned that his neighbor said that he could just borrow some materials or some tools and just do it himself. Just get some cinder blocks and uh, put something up in front of this parking area. He's trying to keep the dirt and the stone from spilling out. So that's his goal. And I understand that. Uh, he hasn't owned the home for very long, maybe a couple of years, and didn't notice this because it's facing the neighbor's um, property and he didn't pay attention. And the previous homeowner is the one who put all of this together. So unfortunately, he has left, he's left with the remnants of a an improperly installed raised parking area. And the reason that the parking surface itself is holding together is because concrete has bridging strength. So you don't notice the faults as immediately as you would with pavers. But over time, if it's not supported, there will be more cracks, um, even more than already just will automatically happen with concrete, concrete cracks and that's just what happens. Um, so I explained that in order to do this properly, you either need to one, saw cut the concrete back a few feet so that you can accommodate all of the necessary stone and geogrid to help hold the hill or the you know area together. And then the block at that point, I don't wanna say it's a veneer, but the block's holding, helping to hold it all together, but a lot of the heavy lifting is being done by the, the grid and the stone that's compacted behind there. Or if you have the room, which he doesn't, at least up against the neighbor's property, you can start the wall several feet away from the parking area so you don't have to try to, to dig under the parking area. And create that wall with the grid and the stone uh, a, a few feet out and then that will help hold everything in place. Uh, he had talked to a concrete leveling company about just trying to fill in underneath but you know with that you still need to have some kind of a wall or a barrier to keep all of that from spilling out over time um, the rest of the stone and the dirt underneath. So he didn't like my answer and I understand because when you're just starting to call around and a lot of times we're the first one that gets called, it's a little shocking to know really what has to happen. You know, and these kind of projects aren't something that the typical homeowner is doing every day. Um, but this is all that we do. So he, he said about, you know, it doesn't have to look fancy. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, he just needs the stuff to stop spilling out. But, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that this parking pad, the vehicle moving back and forth on this and the weight of the concrete are, um, you know, and the fact that there's nothing there as a barrier, um, this is all working together and he's going to not get the life out of this parking pad that he um, anticipates because all of this stuff's coming out from underneath it. So if he doesn't get something up, He's going, and it's not proper, it's not gonna last, he's going to have to replace this concrete anyway. So, but 
you know, I said, maybe there's a contractor or there's a method that I'm not aware of where you could um, support this parking area and build a structure underneath it. But if you're going to put something like cinder blocks and concrete it and rebar it and everything, you're supposed to have a three foot deep concrete footer underneath. So no matter which way you slice it, I don't think there's a quick fix for this or a cheap fix. Um, so it wasn't what he wanted to hear. He said he was going to call around and, you know, find out what his options are. Uh, but a lot of times what happens, either one, somebody goes and they uh, hire a contractor that's going to do whatever they want them to do. And then they find out that they really didn't get a great deal. Um, they got a really bad value um, out of it. And, or, um, they talk to a number of contractors and the contractors will all help to build a case for the right way to do it. And now that they've heard it from several different contractors, then um, sometimes people come around and say, okay, um, this is what has to be done. I just, I have to do it. So, you know, it could go either way or he may just decide to forego it and just say, oh, it's not too bad and just see what happens. So you never know, but um, it's, if he was coming to me from the get-go and said, I wanna build a raised parking area, the way to do that is to build your walls and then put in your concrete and then put your fence up around it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm trying to work backwards on a project um, and a lot of times it's more effort and more costly just because it it takes more to do that than if this parking area didn't already exist so now he needs new concrete and everything so anyway I am rambling as as I tend to do but um, it's it's advantageous to do it right do it once and not have to deal with the headaches and ramifications later because even if you get a cheap price for something um, and think you're getting a good deal, you're paying for it somehow. So you're paying for it in a lack of longevity. Um, you're paying for it in hassle and headaches. Because there are some contractors, you, know, you, you assume they're gonna come in, they're gonna do it properly, and they're going to do it start to finish. And there are plenty of times where I see jobs abandoned uh, for days or weeks at a time. Uh, we actually had the police show up at a job that we were doing because the contractor down the street just disappeared and they were trying to track them down. They just didn't know if we knew who that contractor was and would be able to help them um, contact them. So um, there's all kinds of crazy stuff out there. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, and, and what I told him at the end of our conversation, you know, when he said he was gonna call around, I said, you will find, if you call enough people, you will find anyone to do anything for any price. You will find what you are looking for in the moment. What you have to be careful of is, are you going to get the result that you imagine or envision or expecting um, at that cheap price or for that scope of work that you think is appropriate? 